Hey there friends, thanks for joining me again. And I really wish I had a more exciting background to offer you, especially for a homesteading video. But unfortunately, it's January and it's just, you know, cold and dreary. And so this is the best I can do. You know, some flowers that I got for free, my little turtle friend Oswaldo there. And yeah, pretty much the same old. But anyway, you know what it is the good time for? Um, it is a good time to plan a homestead because this is a good time of year for us to be dreaming about what we want, prioritizing things, even learning things. That way when the time actually comes, we'll actually know what we're doing, we'll have money set aside, that sort of stuff, so that we can be planning now and then we can be doing later. <laughs> so today I wanna to talk to you about how to start homesteading without getting overwhelmed because that can be extremely <laughs> easy to do. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of times where people start a homestead and then they try and get all this stuff done at once and then they realize that it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, it probably takes more money than you think it's going to, and so frequently people can get burnt out. And I don't want that to happen to you, so that's why I want to put together you know, my plan, basically, for how to do that, how to start your homestead without you being overwhelmed, um, and then you know, just better prioritize everything so that you know, the best projects are getting done first rather than, you know, just kind of trying to go at it without really having a good plan. So the first thing I would do, or the first thing I am doing because I actually just moved, I'm putting together a full list of everything that we want to get done. And I mean, just go all out here. Everything that you could possibly think of that you really want to do. Don't just throw stuff on there that you really don't want to do, but throw the stuff on there that you really do and put a full list together. Even if it's a while out that you were thinking you could get these projects done. So once you get your full list of things that you want to, you know, start and do on your homestead, include the prices. Make sure you put, you know, an estimate on how much this stuff could cost. Um, and don't yet necessarily do the best case scenario. Then I would go through and kind of add to that list the times that each of those projects take to either install or establish, depending on the project. You know, if it's like a garden bed, how long does that take to install? If it's a greenhouse again, how long does that take to complete? That sort of thing. If it's something else, you know, say it's, you know, fruit trees or, you know, berry bushes or anything else like that, how long do those things take to establish? That is actually really important information to make sure you add to that list. And the next step would be to prioritize what it is that you really need, <laughs> because it's really easy for us to move to a property and be like, oh, I really want a garden, but then realize that there's actually a lot of other projects that you could better spend your time doing, um, and things that you actually need more than a garden or whatever the project may be. So make sure you prioritize that list according to what you really need the most and then work more on the wants, things that you really want to you know, get done sooner. This is where you're gonna wanna take into consideration not only the money that you have available, but the time that you have to spend on it. And you should also you know, just keep in mind the amount of time that these things take to establish. So it may be easy to say, well, let's just start on a garden now and then we'll add fruit trees next year. But the problem is fruit trees can take, you know, a year or two, even three or four, depending on what kind of fruit it is that you're trying to grow before those things are established. So when you take those things into consideration, you might think, actually, let's go ahead and put more of our time and effort into planting the things that are going to take more time to establish. That way they're already establishing while you're working on the other projects. Hopefully that makes sense. So, you know, if you have certain projects on that list, you know, berry bushes or fruit trees or anything that needs time to grow and, you know, even things that you're not supposed to get fruit off of the first year, like fruit trees, it's best to like pick all their blossoms and whatnot so that they can't fruit. So they concentrate more on putting down a good root system and establishing themselves. So then they can better survive a harsh winter or who knows what, you know, some severe wind or whatever else you have in your area. You want them to be more established. So definitely keep in mind as you're putting together your, you know, 
list of you know wants first of course uh, or excuse me needs first and then your wants and then keeping in mind all the time the money and you know how long these things take to complete i would even go so far as to say putting together a map because that's something that we made a mistake on with our last homestead i just kind of like the first year we lived there we picked up a fruit tree it was on clearance i didn't even know what kind of a pear tree it was you know, it was just cheap. And so I was like, all right, let's just buy this. And then I'm like, yeah, this looks like a good spot for it. And I just planted it. But then when I really went through and planned my homestead out better and put together a map of how I want everything to fit in the yard, the fruit tree was in the way of a greenhouse that I wanted to build. So I ended up having to dig it back out and put it somewhere else. And it just never thrived there. From the time we had dug it up, it just like, it kind of barely limped along and then it eventually died. Whereas the first time we planted it, it was great. It was growing all sorts of leaves, started growing fruit and stuff like that. So transplanting it was definitely a bad thing and it didn't work to the best, you know, the be it didn't work out the best. And so definitely I would put together a plan. I do this, or a map. Every single year I plan my garden, I do the same thing. You know, and then I'll be like, let's plant all this in tomatoes. And then I'll look back and be like, well, but we have all this other stuff we need to do. Maybe we need to shrink this down. And you kind of work things out, you know, figure out and move around the different like locations and spots that you want to put things. And then when you actually go to put them in, you already have your plan in place and you don't have to like put something somewhere and then realize it was a bad idea because this can actually end up costing you a lot more money um you know if you have to redo things but it can also end up costing you more time you know having to redo the same project multiple times so having a map and having everything worked out on exactly where you're going to put the different items that you want to have in your homestead and then having that all you know in place is a really good idea i do have a few you know pointers for you though the first thing i would say is start small it can be really easy to compare yourself to somebody who's further along, but you have to remember that they didn't start out that far along. They started out small and then it grew. So you can't expect it to be that big when you first start out either. So just have a realistic expectation. Try and keep it small if you can. You know, it's better not to bite off more than you can chew. It can be, you know, easy to say, oh, I want all these animals and then you get a bunch of them realize they're really expensive to keep they take a lot of time you know and then have problems with them and you know have to sell them or who knows whatever else and so or maybe you don't even enjoy it you know keeping the animals you thought you would but then when you actually get them it's not it doesn't work out the way that you were hoping to so definitely i would say start small even with each project and then kind of build on those until you get to the comfortable level and you know to where you need them to be another tip would be to find alternatives or different ways that you can get things done for cheaper so when i put together my list and i have all the stuff i wanted to do on it not long ago i found something on the list um, that we were going to use here come in the spring um, on clearance so i was able to go ahead and get some of those it was actually tree stakes so i had a certain amount you know set aside for when we start our fruit orchard but since i knew i wasn't going to need you know more expensive stakes because i was able to find these on you know clearance that means i'm opening up more in our budget for something else so you know just finding different cheaper alternatives or even working with things that you have you know, again, it's just like the map, you know, you plan something out one way and then you're like, oh, but I need to fit in this or that. So you kind of tweak things and move things around. You can do this with your budget by finding cheaper and, um, you know, just more budget friendly alternatives or even working with stuff that you already have so that you can better devote money, you know, to something else. Be active yet patient in your looking for things. So one of the things I would really like to do here in the next year or two is to build a greenhouse on this new house. Unfortunately, greenhouses can be really expensive, but, um, you know, so if you're looking for something and you need it now, that usually makes it to where it costs the most money. But if you're patient, you can get it for cheaper, but being patient can often lead to, you know, not looking as frequently and that sort of thing. So I'm going on different websites and things like that, and I'm looking fairly diligently, uh, but still patiently <laughs> for certain items that we could use for our homestead, like greenhouse materials. So if I go on there and I look it up, I'm like, oh, nothing new's popped up, you know, on Craigslist. And then, you know, a day or two from now, I try it again. But I'm going to continue to, you know, consistently do this until we find the right material. If I were to slack and say, oh, we won't be able to afford it for two years, what if something pops up on Craigslist and sells without us seeing it? So it's a good thing to be both diligent yet patient at the same time so that we're actively looking for the stuff that we want to put on our homesteads um, so that we can get things into place without it having to cost too much money. 
So hopefully that video was helpful to you so you can better put together your homestead without getting overwhelmed and, you know, um, even put together a short, you know, term goal, stuff that you want to achieve this year or even just this season, and then have long-term goals, things you want to put in next year, the year after, or even five years down the road so that you're better able to prioritize, you know, your time and your money to put into the items that are really important and then not bite off more than you can chew or end up with, you know, a sadness that you can't put this stuff together when, you know, both time and money both come slowly. So it's better to just kind of work with what you have as you go along without being overwhelmed. <laughs> so anyway, again, hope you found this video helpful to you and Frugal Green Girl, and we'll see you next time.